There are many inventions of our time that we simply just take for granted. I mean, just as one example, you might go to the shops and buy yourself a toaster. And that toaster, whilst you have absolutely no idea how it's made or how it even works, it's plug and play. You plug it into the wall, you stick your bread in, and you get toast. Pretty simple. 99% of the time, people that own a toaster don't need to know how a toaster works, apart from what buttons to press and flicking the on switch. But what would happen if you took a common appliance, like a toaster, and decided to build one from scratch? That was um, quite a big endeavor, and most people would probably think, is that even possible? Well, for one man, this was his exact challenge. Yes, some people have a deeper thirst for knowledge, and they simply won't take no for an answer. So what if it was up to somebody to build that own toaster from scratch? This is Brain Spill, my name is Tank, and today we're talking about that very story. This is the Toaster Project, and it's also making me feel very hungry, so you're welcome. Before we jump in, if you like the video, be sure to subscribe to never miss an upload. All right, buckle up for a toasty tale of this guy. Thomas Thwaites was a designer and researcher who decided to learn the inside out of how this thing worked and how he would build his own toaster from the ground up. And it wasn't just him obtaining the parts from a hardware shop he went into. Sure, you could probably Google this and find out all the individual parts you need to build a toaster. That's pretty impressive. But it's not quite as impressive as finding out how all these parts are made. And then, I can't believe I'm saying this, a guy went to go and get his own raw materials to build the parts to build a toaster. Bearing in mind that this is a toaster that you could probably buy for about 10 bucks from your local shop. So why did he do this? Yes, that is the question on everyone's minds. Just to clarify, he basically went into a mine and managed to mine the raw ore, being copper, iron, nickel and plastic, to make the requisite pieces he needed to build his very own toaster. That's right, he was making this himself from literally the elements. He acquired copper to make the pins of the electric plug, the cord and the internal wires, iron to make the steel grilling apparatus and the spring to pop up the toast. Nickel was acquired to make the heating element. Mica, which is a mineral a bit like slate, around the heating element is wound. And of course, plastic for the plug and cord insulation. And for the all-important sleek looking casing. The first four of these materials are dug out of the ground. And plastic is derived from oil, which is generally sucked up through a hole. So yeah, this guy thought that if he wanted to make his project legit, he had to go full Minecraft mode up in here. And you know what? That's impressive because I think most people would have gone, nah, I ain't about that. Once he acquired these raw materials, he decided to smelt the iron ore using a leaf blower furnace and a microwave, alongside previous domestic attempts at smelting raw iron by using a chimney pot and hair dryers. Look, this guy has already done a lot more than I could even fathom. I think by the time it got to the point of me trying to get the elements out of the earth, I would have just given up. But this guy is going all the way. This guy really wants toast. Thwaites wasn't satisfied with just playing Minecraft in real life, however. He set out to refine copper, extract oil for plastic, and at this stage probably considered growing a field of wheat for the perfect toast companion. I don't think he did this, but it would have been a whole new level of impressive if he did. The project's progress was chronicled in his book, known as The Toaster Project, aptly named. This video isn't sponsored or anything like that, but I just had to make that abundantly clear that if we're going to go from a source here, we may as well go from the source of the book from the guy that did the project. I mean, you're not going to get any better than that, so shout out. This book chronicles the full story of how he came up with the idea and took the step-by-step -step approach on how he learned to build a toaster. A half-baked handmade appliance from his very own hands, all documented in this one book. And why, why might you ask, did he embark on this toaster odyssey? Well, Thomas Thwaites wanted us to take a long, hard look at the things we mindlessly plug into our kitchen walls, and he wanted us to ponder the mysteries 
of the modern toaster and to appreciate the intricacies behind our seemingly simple appliances. When this story started picking up wind, people did criticize the story, claiming that it would have been easier to simply place the bread over a fire or toast it in that way. While Thwaites acknowledged that this would have probably been easier, he also pointed out that he believed that this was not the point of the project and the end of the experiment and the process he took to get there was what we should really be focusing on rather than just having some toasted bread. In his blog, he pondered the big question and said the following. So, are toasters ridiculous? It depends on the scale at which you look. Looking close up, a desire for toast and the fulfillment of that desire is totally reasonable. Perhaps the majority of human activity can be reduced to desire to make life more comfortable for ourselves, and has thus far led to being able to buy a toaster for $3.99, among other achievements. And that's the very thing, you could very easily walk into a store and buy a toaster for dirt cheap, and that's great, but that has taken years of technological advancements to get to a stage where you can plug and go toasting bread. I mean, back in the day, you had to first make the bread and then cook the bread, which was a whole thing. Now it's as simple as going to Sainsbury's and getting a loaf and sticking in his toaster. It couldn't be more simple. He went on to say, but looking at toasters in relation to global industry, at a moment in time when the effects of our industry are no longer trivial compared to the insignificant, I think our position is ambiguous. The scale of industry involved in making a toaster is ridiculous, but at the same time the chain of discoveries and small technological developments that occurred along the way make it entirely reasonable. In a world where toasters are often dismissed as mere breakfast sidekicks, Thwaites dared to ask the big questions. What's the true cost of our convenience? And how do we get from the point where we can simply push a button and summon perfectly toasted slices of heaven? This was such a well-known project at the time that our man even went on a TED talk. I mean, you can't even imagine me on a TED talk. I'd probably just ramble for shit for 10 minutes, like I do in most videos. But this guy had his full story that he shared for the masses. So if you're interested in watching it, then I would highly recommend you go watch it because it's pretty interesting. So the next time you're doing something even as mundane as sticking some bread in a toaster, just think about it. Where we've come as a species to get to the point where we have such easy access to toast. I mean, it's... We are probably living in a time where we are considered toast gods. We can make toast like that. Not many people in the past could do it that easily, and now we've got it at our fingertips. So thank you, Mr. Thwaites, for bringing this important topic to all of our minds. The next time we have breakfast, we will think of you and your rather extensive creation of a toaster. Just so we're clear here, yes, he did make it, and yes, he did use it, and yes, he made toast. So the toaster project was a success. If you guys liked that video, here's another one just like it. I'll see you guys in the next video. Fantastic.